Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Gubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering motivation on this year, Monday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, I'm looking at a topic, if you see people getting eaten by monsters, stop, assess before rushing ahead. So welcome again, hopefully at a blessed weekend, blessed night rest and ready to take on the challenges of this day. Let us pray. Our Father, what in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the deliverance that you continue to give us and for the way that you guide us, dear Lord, and um, stop us often in our tracks that we might not rush ahead like fools. May you bless us, dear Lord, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. So um, looking at this topic here, you might not see. Uh, I'm looking at this topic here, I'm going to get into my explanation. If you see people getting eaten by monsters, stop, assess before rushing ahead. So this is important in life, uh, and this is a key uh, wisdom for living to me for for life. Uh, often I see uh, people will see people getting eaten or see situations that um, are difficult to understand on the surface, but doesn't stop and try to investigate. So we want to investigate and we want to spend most of our time investigating these things so that we too don't get eaten by monsters or a mon monster that is eating our fellow human beings. So you might not see the monster. So often in life we don't see the monster, but you see them getting chewed, chewed up. This is the human beings around. And you might see, a, or you might see a dry bone or some dry bones. And you should stop and say, why are these dry bones here? Wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, you stop and say, wait, a minute, why, why are these dry bones? Uh, why do I see people being chewed up and eaten? And as I've said in the past, people with bite, bite marks. You want to know what's going on. Then you should stop and ponder what happened. Rushing ahead does not mean you are you will not be eaten too. So it's important if you see somebody coming and they're coughing. Uh, 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 oh man, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And you see this bill of smoke going up. Uh, you should say, you, just, you should not just keep moving forward. You should stop and say, what do you think is happening? And, and if they can chew their cough, say, oh, there's an explosion and I think there's some chemical that's leaked. Then you'll be like, oh, oh, I need to head out to there. But a person could say, well, I'm tough. I'm the baddest. I'm the greatest. I will move forward. And somebody said, listen, if you don't move forward, you're going to get damaged. You're going to get hurt. Pull back. So bravery does not mean that we ignore um, reality. You know, I was watching an interview and there's a person who was trying to go for uh, some title in boxing. And he was told by his doctor that if he continue fighting three more fights, he will not be able to count the money. His brain will be so damaged. It would damage his neurological system so bad from all the punches in his head that if he continue and he wins more, he will not be able to count the money. And... I'm looking at that and I'm like, wow, it can get that bad that um, you, you can't even count the money. But somebody could be like, I'm the baddest, I'm the toughest, I'm Superman. And then what happened? Their brain is fried. But they're Superman. They're Superman. So this doesn't mean that you're brave because you're going ahead. Um, without reason, you're going ahead, ignoring reality. We have to be careful with that because some people believe that they're going to go into an impossible situation. And somehow in the Bible, the Bible teaches that you should rush in as a fool. That's not what the Bible teach. You know, somebody could say, well, Lloyd, how about the story of David and Goliath? Didn't David rush in? Well, he didn't rush in with his bare hands. And he was well trained with what he was going to do. He knew what he was going to do. He knew the Lord was going to open up a way for him. And he knew the Lord had to deliver him. But he just didn't rush in with bare hands. He didn't take the weaponry, weaponry that was available then, the best weaponry. But he went in with something that he was quite familiar. And for years, I, I, I wondered about that uh, because I used to use a catapult. You know, it's like a Y-shaped stick with a rubbery, um, thing on it and you know a, 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 like a seat you put the stone in it and you pull it and it could hit something but I remember for the first time when I saw a video of somebody slinging 
a, a slingshot. I was amazed at how fast that thing went. That thing is amazing and it can be aimed. I knew it was aimable because I think you're spinning something and then releasing it, you would not be able to have an aim. And when I saw that, it's, it, it, they actually figure out how to aim it. it. Not something you figure out, it's something you, I guess you do by practice. I was, that is amazing how fast that stone goes. And that it could stunt a person if you hit him in the head hard enough with that thing. Because, you know, again, you, you hear the story, you think it's the, it's the stone that killed him. But later on, it says David took his sword, the sword of Goliath, and chopped his head off. And then you say, ah, oh, the story is a little bit more than what they tell you as a child. When you read it for yourself, you'd be like, oh, it's a little bit more complex. The battle is the Lord, but the Lord um, led him to the stones and the slingshot. So take him out with this. And then chop his head off with his own his own sword. A little bit more, more whatever. So sometimes bravery can be convoluted that the person has have a plan. Being brave doesn't mean you don't have a plan. Being brave doesn't mean you, you're bullheaded and you're stupid. And so many people think stupidity is being brave and then just, just, just get eaten. So we see stupid people getting eaten. We don't rush in and say, we're going to get eaten too. Or we, we, we're not going to get eaten. You will be eaten. And there's so much shipwreck of people in on the side of the street, that when you hear their story, it's amazing how simple it was for them to be av to avoid being eaten. It was very simple, but they just boned it. Notice here, there is right and there is wrong. There is being wise or being stupid. Bravery can be confused with being foolhearted. So a foolhearted person can be seen as very brave. <laughs> Hardheaded, which can be a positive um, thing, if it's realistic, uh, in a person, a hard headed person, often think they're acting by fate while just being stupid, while, you know, while just being stupid while heading for a beatdown. So there's right and there's wrong. You know, a person can be doing wrong and it's going to work out wrong and it's going to be bad. And the person can think, I'm the bravest person. I'm moving forward. And somebody's like, you need to back up. And they're like, I'm not backing up because I'm moving forward. And that's just being stupid. Bravery and being wrong is not, is, to me, it's just two different things. Also, there's the, the idea of being wise and being stupid. A person can do some of the dumbest stuff and people think, oh, they're so brave. And you're thinking, no, nah, that's not brave. This is being suicidal. You know, there's a lot of people who are suicidal that can be viewed as brave. They're ready to die right now because they want to take their lives. And they do something that... Like everybody like, like you're crazy and you don't know they're really crazy. They have suicidal thoughts and their action is because they're ready to kill themselves. So that can be easily convoluted as being, oh, they're so brave because they do something that you, you, the average person would think, uh, that seems suicidal. And you're right. <laughs> they are so suicidal. It, it is, that's what it is. It's, you, you know, the, Doing that is just crazy. You know, break this down this week. That's what we're talking about. So therefore, there um there are people who are just they're not they're not really wise. They're stupid. And but they're suicidal. And they're thinking they're brave. And they're not thinking, no, I'm just dumb. Uh bravery can be confused with being foolhearted. So it's easy to convolute bravery. A foolhearted person is reckless or brash or they, they're rash. They make quick decisions. They act without consideration. You see how easy that is? So a person is rash or a person is, is recklessly bold. You know, it, it is a boldness to it. Uh, it can be a person who's viewed as being brave, but they're just foolish. They're foolhardy. They're foolhardy. And there's this recklessness that they're doing something without thinking. And they're just thinking about it. And then, you know, like if, if I remember watching uh, a few years back, there was these guys that was experimenting with this thing, thing called Tannerite. And it's basically can, if it's get hit with like high velocity and heat and all that, it will explode. And they, you know, normally in normal parlance, if they're doing a movie or they're doing something and they ex they experiment, they w they're playing with some explosives, they're going to have security measures put in place, barriers to make sure if everything blow up, people don't get chopped, killed. I remember they watching the video, they blew the thing up, 
was a lawnmower, old lawnmower. And the lawnmower um, blew up and a piece of the metal flew off the lawnmower, at the lawn tractor, whatever you call it. And it, um, the shrapnel came and chopped one of them foot, you know, just hit the foot that the foot was just bleeding, broke the foot. So his, um, one of his foot got broken. I don't know if it was the ankle. No, it was it probably more near the knee or something. And I remember watching it and thinking, you see, normally in normal life, you're doing something like that, thinking, by, wow, somebody did that. Spe- spectacular. Look at the, the blast. But they'll have probably blast thing, you know, blast shields and stuff to protect them just in case the blast get out of control. It's controlled. And they're not stupid. They're, they're wise. But these guys out in the bush doing something, no protection. They're not behind a tree. So if something go wrong, they actually have protection. They're no protection. So one could say they're brave, right? Because they're blowing up stuff with no protection. Or one could say they're foolhardy. They're just stupid, right? But it's easy to convolute each and thinking this person is brave. You see, when you go outside and you're doing your lawn or you're working with metal or anything that can fly in the air, you know, I put on a safety goggles. Now, somebody could say, oh, I'm not putting on a safety goggles because I'm brave. And you could think, oh, they're brave. Or you could stop and say, no, they're not brave. They're foolhardy. They're just stupid, right? But it's easy to convolute. And a lot of what we see as somebody, oh man, this person is hard, is the, the, it's just simply the person is just boneheaded um, and is just hard-headed and is just being silly. Very important to understand the difference. And when you understand that difference, you you know um it is it is it is it is it's it's when you understand the difference just pause to read a text there if you understand the difference you you get it very clearly that it is not um bravery right it is not bravery it is just being foolish so we don't want to be foolish we want to be brave we want to be um Brave, but not stupid, right? We want to consider well what we're doing, right? So notice here, right? Hard-headed, a person is hard-headed, right? Can be a positive thing. So if you're hard-headed, it can be a very positive thing. So that means if you make up your mind that this is the right thing you're doing and nobody's going to um, push you from doing the right thing, right? It's good to be hard at it because that means you say, look, this is the right thing. I'm going to do it. I don't care what somebody say. Um, I don't care what they do. I'm going to go forward. That's great if you're doing the right thing. But if you're doing that dumb stuff and you're hard at it and nobody can talk you out of doing dumb things, you're going to push forward no matter what. That can be a detrimental thing. So that's what I want to talk to you here about this week. Because I've seen a lot of actions people are doing that no matter what they're told, no matter how they tell it, no matter how much evidence is brought to bear, they think they're they're bold because they're not going to take precaution. Because I guess it's only the weak that takes precaution. And they're not weak. They're hard, right? They're hard. So don't feel like if you're taking precaution, you're not strong. You're not courageous. You're not brave. Taking precaution doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Think about it. A person who is some of the hardest fighters, military fighters, they don't go to battle with their bare hands. <laughs> you know, you get mowed down. They go to battle with all kind of gear. Now, does that mean that they're, they're afraid? No. It just means that they're taking a the precaution. Go again back to the story of David. When David met Goliath, uh, that's a distraction. You know, it, it, in the future, David fought with weaponry. Uh, I remember when Goliath was go- when King Saul was going after David, he went and he got the sword of Goliath and he said, there's none like it. It's not stupid. But what it is, is that he distracted Goliath. He shocked him. 
And that shock became the downfall of Goliath. Goliath could not get it. Why, why are you coming out with me like a dog with, some, with, a, with, a, with a sling shot? And then he just rushed up and took him out fast. It, it, is, it is that, but it's, that was not the standard protocol for fighting. He said, the Lord is going to deliver you in my hand. I'm going I'm to watch, watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defeat in a shocking way. But you see, some of the biggest, baddest, boldest, bravest fighters, what we normally call the elite force in any country, they're geared up to the max because what it is, they, they're going to rush into a firefight. But they're geared up to rush into a firefight. They're dealing with bullets and bullets going to be fly, flying. And they still get mowed down. So t- taking precaution, um, assessing the situation in front of you, understanding what happened to the people before you and how they got eaten by those monsters. Then after you've done that and you've geared up, you prepare, and you re- you say, I'm, re- I'm, still re- I'm, I'm ready to face the monster. That is wisdom and that is bravery because the monster still is eating. But you, you need to learn what happened before you, before you rush in. And if you look at that, you find that you want to be in this quality. Uh, and, and I say you, you're willing to face difficulty. You're willing to face dangers. And, but how you face that will determine what's your success. Because Again, what is wisdom? Wisdom comes from experience. It's come from knowledge. It, it, it comes when you have good judgment. So a person who is foolhardy, a person who is stupid, a person who is a fool, does not have good judgment. They don't learn from experience. They're not trying to gain knowledge. They don't study. They don't try to study life and study things. And when they do that, what it is, they still going forward, but they're going forward in ignorance, without experience, without practicing good judgment. And they get eaten all the time. They get eaten all the time and they believe that, oh, they're going forward, they're going to get a winning and they're going to get a beat down. And you see the beat down coming and you say, bro, you're going to get a beat down. Where are you going? And they'll be like, I'm moving forward. I'll be like, no, you're not why you're stupid. Are you just being silly? So you got to stop and ponder. So again, my topic, if you see people getting eaten by monsters, stop. It's important for you to stop and assess. And instead of rushing ahead, I read this text here for you. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 through 32. Luke 14, verse 28 through 32. It says, For which of you are t- intending to build a tower? Sit it not down first and count at the cost, whether ye have sufficient to finish it. Less happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began building and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, sit it not down first and consulted whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand, or else was the other is yet great ways off or great way off. He sent it an ambassador and desired conditions of peace. So one of the sit and count, it doesn't mean, you could be brave and you could see uh, a king mount a war against you, as Christ is saying here. And he mounts a war and he has 20,000 men and you have 10. But you could calculate and you say, it's a two to one. But I think I can win. I think our training, our experience, as it says, as I said earlier, with wisdom, our experience in the past, the knowledge that we have, the judgment that we're going to use, I think by judgment, I think we can take him. We can win. And you make your calculations. You present it. And then the people say, yeah, I think we can do it. Or you make your calculations, you realize, oh no, we can't do this. We need to make a, peace and you make a condition you're wise you're not foolish but a foolish person could say yeah we can't do it and then somebody said do you calculate oh no i don't want to hear nothing we can't do it i don't want to hear no negativity i don't want you no discouragement i just want to hear positivity right now positively i only want people to tell me that we're gonna win and then they go and get eaten and you say why they get eaten so later on you come and you read in the annals of history 
you're reading, you know, the, the account you went to the area that they got wiped, wiped out. And you see they get wiped out and the same king, king is coming your way to attack you. And you don't stop and say, well, let's find out how this person lose. So I can know, do I make an, an agreement with the king or do I go up against him with the same small amount of troops? That's what you do. But a foolish person would, you could think now a person that running in at 10,000, right? You could think the king now going up 10,000 against 20,000. Man, he brave. He's a true leader. And the, the people get deceived this way. Because they see him and they think, man, he, he just want positive. He just want to be a cheerleader. He just want everything to go fine. And you're looking and thinking, they're going to get eaten. What's the foolish thing they're doing? And then somebody said, no, they're not going to get eaten. They, they're positive. They, 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 they're brave. I'd be like, that's not brave. That's foolish. They're going to get eaten. And you see they get eaten. And you're like, oh, man, I can't take the seat, the blood, the gore, the gut. The gut's flying everywhere. What a stupid thing. And you see people do this in their personal life all the time. And, and believing that, oh, I'm being positive, I'm being brave. Listen, that's false bravery. That's false motivation. Don't let nobody motivate you, make, making you a fool. It is not the wisest thing to do. Because that's recklessness. That's being rash without rushing, through, rushing forward bravely, quote unquote bravely, without ever thinking, can I do this? You know, you see this all the time. People get into fights and they didn't ask this. Do I, do I think I can take this person? If you can't take this person, you're cool yourself. But people run into stuff and they run into difficulties. And they get eaten because they didn't co compute. Now, the text Christ is talking about, in this text in Luke 14, verse 20 through 32, Christ is really talking about what it takes to follow him. How serious you have to be about following him. And what he basically is saying here is that when you're following him, you have to look at other people who try to follow him and it didn't work because it didn't count the cost properly. So even following Jesus is not like the hocus pocus and the the um the hyper fluffy stuff that people preach. Christ is not saying that. Christ is, you know, Christ's other part of the Bible, another area, it was cataloged or recorded that Christ simply said. You know, foxes of foxes of holes and the birds of the air has nests. But he says the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He was saying that to somebody that wanted to follow him. And he's basically saying, to follow me is going to be difficult. So I want you to count the cost. And when he said that to the person, the person probably had high goals, dreams. He probably wanted to think following Christ, he was going to get money, get luxury. And Christ is basically saying, count the cost because it's going to be expensive. And the Bible says the person didn't answer, he walked away. He just did not, he just left it alone. That was enough. You see, Christ count the cost for him. Christ says, listen, you can rush in and say, you're going to follow me, you're going to fall apart. Remember, 70 people, 70, the 70 that was following Christ, one group of 70 people, men, they left when things get rough. The disciples quaked, trembled, fear when things got rough, right? So basically that's what Christ is saying. It's going to cost a lot. And so if you're going to rush in, you better think twice. So if I was thinking to follow Christ and things are getting less, you know, less people are following Christ. It's the same, the same statement I have here for my title. I would apply to following Christ. Notice I say, if you see people getting eaten by monsters, the monsters was not, monster in this situation was not Christ. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes, they were eating people. They were setting up the people against Christ. They were making the people hate Christ. Hate Christ. So if you're going to follow Christ, man, you're going to get a lot of heat. A lot of heat. You're going to get eaten and it's going to be hot because the hate is being built up. Because remember, they were getting the people to a point where they would want to murder Christ. So if you're following him, you start to worry, man, am I, going to get, am I going to get killed? So at that point, now the 70 already leave or left or they're getting ready to leave Christ. So he's, these people coming, I'm like, I want to follow you. And Christ is saying, man, it's going to be tough. Christ wasn't hiding. Christ wasn't trying to build up a whole bunch of followers at this point. But people still like, man, such a powerful preacher, such a healer. I want to follow him. And Christ said, listen, it's going to be rough. 
and they just backed away. So you have to see the 70 left. It got rough. Can you handle it? But somebody could say, yeah, I'm brave. I'm going to follow Christ. Christ is going to be like, listen, man, it's not, that, it's not what you're thinking. It's going, it's going to be hard. This is for the hardest. This is why probably was best for fishermen to follow Christ. People who had too much money, too much fame, it just wouldn't work because they had too much to lose. The rich young ruler, he wanted to follow Christ. And he just like, I'm out. When Christ says you have to sell everything, he said, I'm out. And technically he would have lost it. He would have to either give it away or lost it long on the long run. Because none of the disciples had anything. They either were murdered or the the last one, John, was in prison. So they, they would have lost it anyhow if you follow Christ. Either way, the short term or long term. Either he'd, he'd have to sell it, which would be the wisest thing to do. Or he would be hunted, so they would have lost he probably would have replaced Judas. He loved money, Judas loved money. He would have overcome, probably replaced Judas. As you know, his testimony would be, I love money. So he probably would have lost the money. And so you have to count the cost. You have to observe. So if I'm now, by God's grace, if I was living that time, and I'm like, I think I can handle this. Then I have to be like, okay, I'll have to assess first. Applying it here. Assess first. The 70 left. They're gone. Why they leave? What does it really mean to follow this this teacher? And you assess it. You stop. You assess. You see that they didn't survive. So why do I think I'm gonna survive? And you assess. And if you have to your assessment, you believe that you can survive. That's true bravery, because that's now you're moving forward with all the knowledge. Now, if you move forward and you didn't assess, that's not bravery, that's foolhearted. Does that make sense? There's a difference. I'm running through again. So you, you're looking at the situation. Remember, wisdom is you're taking experience, knowledge, and you're making judgment, good judgment. And you're doing it in face of danger. Right? So you're, going, you, you're moving forward knowing you know the dangers. Foolhearted is just rush. It's making decision without you really you don't know. You didn't assess. You didn't stop to look at the danger. You just rush into because you're hard. And you just get eaten. Chomp, 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 chomp. You get eaten. Okay, you, you didn't stop. So if we apply it to Christ, it'd be the same thing. You want to follow Jesus, right? And you have to stop and say, man. You look around the church and you see so many people say that they're following Jesus, but they're getting eaten. They're failing. Things are not working out. All kind of f- divorce. You know, we're going to talk about some of them. I'm going to run ahead, get ahead of myself a little bit here. But all kind of failure going on in their life. Debt, di- divorce, disease, all kind of stuff. And life just chewing them up and you see the pews empty. And you say, man, most of these people didn't survive. You go to a church and you say, what happened to this church? They say, oh, this church can seat 300 people, but there's only 25 people in the church. And they say, man, all these people got eaten? Wow. So what does it take to survive? And so you, somebody could just rush in and say, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Or another person could say, you know what happened? Let, 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 give, give me the information. Let me learn a little bit. Teach me a little thing here. Let me understand what I'm up against. And you learn, 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 chum, chum, chum. You partake of the information, you swallow it, you make it digest. Start hurting your stomach, you're like, okay, I think I can do this. See, that's bravery. See, bravery does not remove the knowledge. Bravery doesn't mean that you didn't sit down with pen and paper, you didn't pray, you didn't fast. You you didn't face what you're going to really face. You understand what you're facing. You know the monsters was out there that eaten many people before you. But you assess. And then you move forward. That's bravery. But I just say like puppy love. You know, somebody get met, met somebody a month later, they're getting married. That's not, that's not bravery. That's foolish. Bravery is that you know the person, you know what you're up against, you still get married. That's love. That's true love. So there's many people, as I say, who they believe that they're brave, but they're really foolish. And they're hard-headed, but not in a positive way. 
in a negative way because they're heading for a beatdown because they're stupid. They, and they, take, they don't want to hear. They don't want to assess. They don't want to learn. They don't understand why something is there for. And they're getting eaten all the time. And they're not stopping. And this is like normally say a young man is young and foolish. And that's what I say. A wise person never desired to be young, young again. Because young people is young and foolish. They, do, they, don't, they don't stop to, to learn. You know, always, even when I'm at church, I'm always thinking I see a young person. And they see how the adults are engaged in a, con- in a conversation. And they're not interested. And I'm thinking, why, they're, not, they're not even interested. Why these adults are so caught up with this thing? Why do they want to talk about it? Because they're going to get eaten. And then later on in life, they're going to learn, oh, that's why they were so engaged in that conversation. But they don't know because they don't see that other people are getting chomping, chomped on. So let's look at this here. So when you see a homeless person, on the side of the street, what do you do? Do you stop? Do you think? Do you ask why? Literally. Do you wonder how he got there? Are you curious? Because you should be curious. Do you start to investigate? Because there might be much more to the story or his story. And you might be next in line to be on the street. And I think that's why so many people even end up on the street like that. They end up on the street because they never stop. Now somebody said, Are you need do I need to know his personal story? No, it's so much stories like that that it, it, they, you can read about it. There's movies about it. There's documentaries. There's so much material. There's some people that made it back from the street. And they wrote it in a book. And if it's in a book, it should not be a secret to you. It shouldn't be some kind of hidden knowledge. You need to investigate. Because probably by you looking at that person and then questioning, how did he get there? Was he born like this? Was he always like this? Is he born in the street? Did he grow his whole life on the street? What is his story? Because remember, what is his story? It's his story. You know, I guess some, sooner or later they're going to say it's her story or they're going to change it to HXR story. So it's an X, X story, no matter whose story it is. But that's the point. The point is everybody has a story. They have a history. And you need to know. And a lot of times you don't need to know the individual. You just didn't know enough of those stories that you start to form an opinion. And you start to see that person graduating from high school, taking drugs, start dabbling with some drugs, then dabbling with harder drugs. Then their mind get blown by the drugs or they lose everything, their family, their loved one. They push everybody away. They become foolhardy, hard-headed. Nobody can talk to them, advise them because they're going to do what they're going to do because they're grown. And next, you know, you see them. On the road, and there's more to that story. And you realize the drugs didn't put them there, per se. It's being foolhardy. It's being brave in a stupid way. Because what happened? They're going to go ahead and they listen to nobody. Because what happened? They're their own man. And you said, somebody said, Lloyd, I, I disagree. It's the drugs, it's the addiction. That's part of it. Well, a lot of it you find out that you can't stop certain people because what, they listen to nobody. They're going to go ahead and they're going like, I'm rushing in, bro. They'll be like, you, sh- you, sure? you sure? Everybody rushing down that way going to get eaten. But like, I ain't listening to you. I listen to nobody because I, I have sense. I'm more rushing. They rush. You have to know why that person is there because you know if you don't learn what it is, you might think the thing is what messing them up. It's their mindset. You know, there are certain things that somebody, listen, you take ethanol. Ethanol can use to, to do some combustible thing. And you, you take it in your mouth and you be like, man, that thing burns. And you see people just drink that stuff down. And you're supposed to be sensible enough to say, wait a minute, man. I, I want to study about that thing. I want to understand what it is. It seems so harsh. 
So a fool will run in, rush in. The Bible, you know, the, not Bible. As a saying in the secular world or in the world, the world, it just says, fool rush in where angels fear to trod. So the angel's not going there. But you, man, you find foolish people, they're running in. And you try to stop and say, whoa, whoa, bro, stop. D don't go over there, man. They, 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 uh, God's angel not even going over there. Where are you going over there? And they'll be like, oh, man, I'm hard. You're harder than angel? angels? If the angels are running out of there, where are you running out into there? Angels trying to get lot out of there. You trying to get in there. You're going to get burned up, man. What's wrong with you? So that's what it is. You see, we have to, st in this level thing, often people get eaten and notice. They're not, they're not, they're not interested in details. Their personality in the mind is that it hurts their head. Too much information. They have not learned. You know, like somebody I remember told me, I said, Lord, you know, it's hard for me to read books. I said, why? I said, I have headaches. So all you have to do is put anything in a book and that person is done. They're going to be forever silly. So you, you want to be able to be curious enough to ask yourself some question. Then try to find out because probably the, the method or the way, the bone of the nest that person have that get them there. You might need to learn. You might need to learn. You start learning that, oh, it's not just the alcohol. It's not just a mental breakdown. It's that that person was hard at it. Nobody could talk to them. That person, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And they come with all kind of excuse. They're masses of excuse. And they excuse, excuse, until they excuse themselves on the side of the road. And then now they need something to take away the pain. So when you see that person, investigate. There might be much more to the story. You might be next. And that's my, why you find out. So you start saying, because this is one of the things that I think. You say, what am I really talking about here? I'm going to tell you, the thing I'm thinking that is so difficult to deal with, the most difficult thing is to deal with, is people who think in moving forward, doing dumb stuff, is being, they're being wise. People move forward without like to ask questions. You almost have to shove the information on them, and it never works. Because nobody learned that way. They always get a beat down, and they think they're being brave. They think, oh, I'm hard. And you know, no, bro, you're stupid. You can't do that. That they don't work like that. And you say that to them. You, you don't say it like that. You say it nice to them. And they still go ahead and get a beat done. And then they say, Oh, bro, pray for me. I'm like, what am I praying for? What, what am I you you being dumb? What am I praying for? I'm praying that you sh I don't think I should pray for myself for you to listen to people. Go investigate yourself and start being dumb. You you not being hard. Because you run into a beatdown. <laughs> Come on now. Can I get an amen? You're not being a hard. You're not being tough. You're the tough guy. Because you run into beatdown getting beaten up. A wise person will back away from that stuff. And say I'm not going to get a beatdown. Because that beatdown everybody. But a person will be like. Oh I'm hard because I can't handle whatever. They can't handle the liquor. They can't handle whatever. I'm not looking at you. You look beaten up by that liquor. Man back away from that. Oh, but if I back away, I'm not going to look hard. Well, praise the Lord. Don't look hard. Because it's not really looking hard right now. You're looking stupid. Right? But there's people who, oh no, they don't ask information. They don't, like, listen, ask some information. L brother, skydiving, I'm telling you. I, listen, that's nothing unless you, 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 when you start seeing the people with a wing suit. Have you ever seen these people with wing, wing suit? They have on a wing like a bat wing. It's a whole body body suit. And they jump off of a mountain and then they glide, they glide. And so much of these guys have done that. They, this, that thing makes skydiving look like it, it's for children. So much of these guys have done that and splatter, splatter into the sides of, of hills and mountains. Splatter. You can imagine they're going how many miles per hour, probably a hundred and something miles per hour and ram themselves right into a mountain. Just splatter. But you can't talk to them because they say, oh, I'm having a thrill. It's thrilling. It's my adrenaline is rushing. Yeah, because you're about to die. That's foolish. And you see young, young people just dying like crazy like that. I'm like, why are you dying like that? And you can't tell them. So listen, you don't see a lot of people splatter before you. You next. I say, you wonder, it's probably suicidal. And they're hiding their suicidal tendency um, by saying they're brave. So I've seen this over and over again and this is what I want to talk about this week. 
That's what my intention to talk about, talk to you about. Because I can show it in life, everywhere in life. Where you see dead bodies, dry bones, people being eaten, messed up in their life. And you see a, a thousand people line up, waiting to get eaten. And you'll be like, all these, these crazy people, they don't see that say, everybody that went down that path is destroyed. Oh, I can't handle it. Bro, you're going to get destroyed. Back up. Oh, that's not brave. No, you know, no, there's a difference between being brave and being stupid. Be, be, be brave. Truly brave. Assess. Learn. So uh, notice uh, here, wherever you see a ruin, literally a ruin, wonder why. So if you're driving, you see a church building and it's, it's a ruin, heap of ruin. Wonder why. Stop and say, why, why is there that ruin? Right? If you go, into the, 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 you go to a town and you see burned out buildings, you go to a city, you see whole city blocks and blocks of the blocks just ruin. Don't just say it's ruined. Go investigate. Find out why is that city ruined? Why is it like that? What's the history? And don't just take a, a five second history, a one sixty minute, sixty second history. Go watch a documentary. Go read a book. Find out what happened, what played out, and you will be amazed. And that going to teach you how things get messed up. That's going to edify you, educate you. And there's many people in life, they could be living in the city. And they don't know why the city got messed up. Isn't that fascinating? And they're a, they're a victim to what's happening and they don't know why. They don't know how it came about. And they didn't stop. And so why is that ruined there? Why is that plantation not operating? You don't know it's a plantation. You probably don't know what a plantation is. But you see this big, nice, beautiful farm, big home, whatever. You say, what used to go on over there? And you could live all your life and never ask that question. You're not curious. And you show me a person who do dumb stuff and make dumb decisions. The problem is they don't ask questions and they're not curious. And they're rushing in because they're brave, because they're going to move forward in ignorance. And you're going to see them screaming a little bit from now because it's just dumb stuff. And that's where you can have a whole area of places and you have drug epidemic and you can't get rid of the drug epidemic because it's just one crazy people after the other being brave, quote unquote brave, but they're being foolish and they're just getting destroyed like everybody else. And then they say, oh, the whole community is destroyed. Yeah, because it's just a whole community of foolish people. And don't tell me that it can't be a whole community of foolish people. Because look at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's just some dumb people that are going to get a whipping. And they can't see the whipping coming. But we can. So there is probably a cause or a strategy that was used to cause that ruin. So you need to learn what is the strategy that caused that ruin. What is the cause? Because if you don't learn it, you might fall prey to it. And that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm trying to teach and explain. I'm trying to go over this history because when you see that ruin, you might be next. And you might be listening to me here and you might think, oh, I'm just here talking about stuff. It's just here to occupy your time. No, I'm here to tell you that you might be next. You better learn. Because this life is, you will get a beat down in this life. And God is not prejudiced. And God doesn't think you're cute. God doesn't think you're special because you think you're special. You will end up in the same way if you continue in ignorance. You need to know. And that's what we're talking about here. It's, notice here, you could see a country in ruin. There's a history to it. There's a reason why. They're being beaten down because of a certain reason. And they're ignorant of it. And that's what over the years I try to understand. You see a country and you say, what is the national debt? Debt. Sorry. I said it right. What's the national debt? How much money they owe? How much money they're making? Why is that? Why are they so indebted? And you're going to start to dig around and, and you're going to find, wait a minute, why am I in debt? I probably have the same problem. I probably need to learn the lessons that I need to learn right here, right now. And I need to readjust my GDP, my gross domestic product. I need to adjust my spending. I need to export more than I import. The same principles apply to us as human beings. And then we avoid the beatdown. 
But some people, they in that mode where they're not, they're not, that's too much information. So they stay stupid. And we don't want to stay stupid because this is wisdom for living. So you need to know how a country gets into ruin. You need to know a person gets into ruin. Now, I started with the person because I think it's easier sometimes to understand. But it's the same application. You can apply to an organization. You can apply to a state, a country. You could apply to a person. You could apply it to uh, just a home, a family. And you find it's going to be the same thing. You watch any family. For me, I've done enough marriage counseling, read enough book, uh, books on marriage counseling. You could tr- trust me on this one. You could, you could, you know, you could you see it. But I'm talking from wisdom and, and experience. You see a family breaking apart. It's just too much boneheaded people in the family. Too much hearted people, foolhardy people. They're just going to go ahead and they, they're not interested in knowledge, understanding. They don't ask questions. And they make the dumbest decision. They're rash. They just do things on the whim. Foolhearted. And they're miserable. Because it's been... I've met people that... It, it seems like every day or every other day they're making a dumb decision. They don't consult nobody. They don't consult a book. They don't consult history. They don't consult Google, YouTube. They don't, they don't ask for no information. And you know, I've been pure problems in their life. And I say to you, say, Lloyd, come on, every day, I've known people, it is amazing how much dumb choices they can make within a week. Sometimes multiple dumb choices a day. And I realize it's not dumb choices they make, it's unconsulted choices. They don't take counsel, they don't ask for counsel. They never pick up the phone and say, ring, 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 hey, look, I want to ask you this. Never. I guarantee, you watch a person, they tell you about the decision after they make it. Because you know what happened? They're boneheaded. They're foolhardy. They're going to rush before they, 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 they ask counsel. They don't investigate. They don't meditate. They're just like, hey, I'm going to do this. Boom, do this. Boom. And you be like, man, bro, why well, you have so much problems in your life? Oh, because I only announce after I'm, I, I made the move. I don't tell nobody. Oh, because, and they'll say, oh, because I'm a private person. Yeah, you're a private fool. You ask counsel. The Bible says you wage war through wise counsel. And there's a lot of people, they don't do this. And I'm, I'm, as I say, through this week, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you examples of it. It is replete. As I say, I can write this. And this is something I wrote down to, to cover, you know, weeks back. And yet, <laughs> I can write this down to cover weeks back. And I'm doing it. And I'm going to show you. will see. As the news play out this week, you'll see. This thing, and I have so many random topics that any of those random topics I write down. It's just I'm writing down topics based upon what I'm observing. And I will show you, you will see so many things will play out this week that will fit right into what I'm talking about. That you will think I wrote it as I'm going along. But I write it before and it, things will just fall in place because this is human beings. I'm telling you, this is how human beings work. They don't seek knowledge. You know, they say for, for, for stupid people, they need, you need to hide things in a book. It's in a book, it's going to beat them because they're not going to pick up a book because they don't want to know nothing. They know already. They're already grown. They're adults. <laughs> and here am I, I'm trying to still understand life. And they already learned and they're young. <laughs> and I've known people, they live many years later. And I was watching something yesterday on the news and there's a lady that says she's watching a bird fly by. She's in, I think, Oregon. And, you know, there's wildfires burning there. So there's wildfires burning, fires burning over by Oregon. So she says she's watching the, a bird fly by. And all of a sudden she sees the bird drop out of the, the air. And she's, she said to her daughter, we're getting out of here. And they left the area. She said, well, if, if he's killing the bird, probably we are next. Right? You know, but somebody would say, I'm brave. I'm going to take deep. I'm gonna, Actually, now is the time I'm going to practice deep breathing exercise. <laughs> Right? I'm gonna be inhaling full re- inspiration and respirate, ex- ex- you know, expiration. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take it in because I'm brave. I'm tough, and yet all in the news media, everywhere they're giving say health advisory. The worst here in the world right now is in the western part of the world. I remember I wrote this before all of this, and yet I can apply it. And and they will say and they say, oh, you can't trust the media. You can't trust the scientists 
the government. The government is saying that there's the word worse air quality. Can't trust them because the media is corrupt. And you look at this person, you're like, you believe this foolishness the president is telling you? Are you an idiot? You, be, you really believe that? The, you can't trust the media. And these people are crazy and they'll do it. And then they'll go like, and, and next you know, they're having a lung problem. I'm like, man, you foolish, man. So I, 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 th- you can't do this. So there's probably cause to their ruin. You need to understand the cause and learn how to not follow the suit. Or something they did that were warned about. Again, they did something that they, there was a warning about it, not to do it. But they either didn't hear the warning or they ignored the warning, rushed in and got beaten down. And they went forward thinking they're being brave, but that's not bravery. Bravery must know that there's impossibility. You're not going to see a vat of burning whatever, burning metal and say, I'm brave, I'm going to jump in. That's suicide. Stupid. But there's some people, oh, I have faith in Jesus, and they jump in. That's dumb. And I see people do that type of stuff. I say, bro, there's a pool there, and that pool is a burning lava. Oh, I'm going to jump in because Jesus is going to de- deliver me. No, you're suicidal. Stop fooling people. All right? We're not suicidal. There's a difference that I know, but when you hear somebody talking like this, you even sometimes have to stop and say, wow, they're brave. And I have to hold myself and say, no, they're not brave. They're dumb. We shouldn't be dumb and excuses and say there's bravery. Because there's things that I see people do spell this demise. I see people who are boneheaded and they go ahead and they'll be like, no, bro, I don't, I, don't, I don't take no help. Jesus will deliver me. Like, Jesus will deliver you? Really? And then Jesus don't deliver them. And I don't say nothing. Because, you know, normally you want to because you say, bro, Jesus was not going to deliver you. The deliverance came because somebody came to you and said, don't do that. That's Jesus delivering you. Jesus sent you an angel. Your angel was probably your, your friend, your, 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 your loved one, your church member. And the person like, no, I'm going forward because I have faith. No, that's not faith. That, that, that's, that's, that's just being stupid. And that's just getting yourself killed. Don't get yourself killed. So do not get caught up into the hype about how great it is. Learn about those who are being eaten by drugs. Many people eaten by drugs every day. And they, 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 and there's more being eaten because they don't study about the drugs. Understand, you can't never handle drugs. Drugs is too potent for the body. We're, we were not built to eat anything that purified on a regular basis. That the drugs, I, 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 the only viacy with drugs, and I'm saying hard drugs, or even medical drugs, is for short-term use to save life in an immediate emergency. Beyond that, you need to find something natural. Our bodies were not built to, to eat, partake of spoiled stuff. So we're not partake to eat things that are spoiled, spoiled food, alcohol, whatever it is. You're not brave because you're going to sit down and if there's a fruit and it's rotten in and you eat it, you're sick. That's not bravery. So there's a difference between being brave and being just dumb. And many people equate both. I don't see it as both. I think it's totally different. They're not being brave. And there's people doing stuff that's going to cause them sickness, cause them cancer. And they think I'm being, they're being brave. And you're weak, bro. You need to eat some steak. I'm like, what am I going to eat that for? I think it's filled with cancer and all kind of pesticide. Oh, but I'm, I'm hard. Like, you're going to be hard for too long. <laughs> financial crashes. People being eaten by financial crashes. You need to know that this is our society's run. The Wall Streeters, they bill up and then they crash the economy. And they make money from both ends, from making, from the economy going up and the economy going down. So you need to know, look, learn. Go buy a book, read about the system, and don't get eaten by this. Suicides. When you see a person commit suicide, you got to stop and say, okay, why commit suicide? Don't just, just say, oh, he's a weak mind. You know, it's a, I've heard people, you know people who are silly, who say somebody who commits suicide is a weak mind. Uh, no, some of the most strongest boneheaded people are people who commit suicide because they're not going to listen to nobody. I'll tell you this because this is a, it's a opposite thinking. The hardest-headed people I've met is the people that are most depressed. The more hard-headed, the person who basically this presentation is for is the people who are most depressed and suicidal because they don't take no advice. They're going to do what they're going to do. They don't talk to people. And they're the most depressed and suicidal. 
So you see somebody hard-headed and you hard-headed and you see them banging their head against the wall. You need to stop and say, why are they banging their head against the wall? And you're going to say, oh, this depression. No, it's because they're hard-headed. They go forward and beat themselves up and get more depressed and they don't listen to nobody. We're going to talk about that this week. Confusion or astonishment of heart. You need to know. Somebody's astonished of heart. What's their diet? What's their lifestyle like? Because that's probably what you need to learn so that you change your diet and lifestyle. That's not being brave. Depression, etc. Um, it's, it's important to know that when you look at the story of Solomon and Gomorrah, which I don't know if we'll look at this week, but you remember the story of Solomon and Gomorrah. They were in a prosperous area in the plain, a very fertile area, and their actual towns were prosperous. But their lifestyle was a lifestyle that was sick, and the end result was death and destruction. So we don't want to go down a path of thinking, oh, we're going to a path of sin, or we're going to a path of, as they say, smoking marijuana, taking mushrooms, and then you, you meet people like this, and they look, they, they, they seem so messed up. Boy, old oh man, you, you were brave to take that in your body. Yeah, you're foolish. So as I say, a lot of what is called bravery is just stupidity, it's foolishness. Because yes, as I say, if you see a rotten fruit and somebody eat it, somebody goes, man, you're brave, I can't eat that. That'll make me sick. No, they're not brave, they're dumb. So if you see people getting eaten by monsters, stop and assess before rushing ahead because you might get eaten. In Leviticus 18 onward, Leviticus 18, verse 19 onward, it says here, Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. So when a woman going through a period, not to have sex with her. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife and to defile thyself with her, so no adultery. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So God is saying, you don't do this. There will be results, consequences. Somebody can say, no, I'm brave. I'm going to do it anyhow. Okay, you be dumb. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So no gay sex, no anal sex. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there are there too. It is confusion, so no bestiality. Defile not yourself in any of these, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land defile it, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomit out her inhabitants. So when you see the land revolting, when you see nature revolting, you could say it's global warming. And that's part of it because you sow wickedness and you reap wickedness. But we got to understand that as we see the, the adultery and the bestiality and the, the all kind of sexual immorality multiply, all the homosexuality multiply, we will see the land revolt. So you got to look at the, the beat down and look at the historical narrative and see how God works and see how the land work. And when you see this, you got to say, oh, I, I, I can't do that because if I do that, I'm going to get the same result. So if you see people getting eaten by monsters, you need to stop and assess. You need to start studying history. And you need to start pulling back and not rushing ahead and be like them. As you're going to get the same result. So we're going to look at that this week. Yea, therefore shall keep my statutes and my judgment and shall commit and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourn among you. For all these abominations have the men of this land done, which were before you. So the Canaanites were basically very abominable in their lifestyle, which were before you. For what for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people, all right? So it's important to keep the ordinance of the Lord. So we don't want to report, repeat the mistakes of those that have gone before us, those that we see getting a beat down, because we too will receive the same punishment. Very important, all right? Very important. We want to learn from this. We want to be boneheaded and hardheaded and foolhardy and thinking, oh, we're being brave, and all we're doing is rushing in to get a beat down. We want to see people getting beat down. We want to see people dying of all these cancers, dying of all these things, and see what happened. I'm not going to go down that path because I'm going to end up with the same results. 
We don't want those results. We want better results. We want long-term blessed results. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I thank you for your word, for the blessings of your Lord, the warnings, the stories, the history that you give us, that we do not have to repeat the follies of the past. May you deliver us, dear Lord, from our heartedness. And may we seek counsel, seek wisdom, seek a blessing. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live tomorrow morning where we should talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.